Now of those people who like under cabinet lights, I think they really like them for two reasons. Uh, one, they create a nice kind of ambiance in a kitchen, especially if all the other lights are out. It's nighttime, you go in the kitchen, and it's just got a nice mood to it. And then the second reason is much more practical. Under cabinet lights just throw some nice light on your workspace. But one thing that is really annoying right now, like in this moment about under cabinet lights, is that uh, if you look for some, like at a hardware store and especially online, you will find the most cheesy array of like multicolor LED strip lights that have adhesive on them and uh, peel off and fall down. Uh, all kinds of under cabinet lights with remote controls. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a method for installing just the most basic, clean, simple LED puck under cabinet lights. All right, now like most lighting jobs, this one starts by locating a power source. And you know, depending on your situation, there are a lot of ways you can tap a power source. It could be a new one or an existing one. In this case, I use an existing power source. This was a single switch for a ceiling light and I just took it, uh, tagged the incoming lead you know where the actual juice is coming from and turn it into a duplex box. So uh, two switches instead of one and one's gonna be the under cabinet lights. Now uh, prepare to cut a lot of holes in your walls if you're gonna do this job because you're gonna be fishing wires and with under cabinet lighting there are a few different ways to go. You could run your wires up through the ceiling in the attic if you have one. You could run it down through the crawl space which is what I'm doing joining all your under cabinet sections all together in the crawl space, or you could fish them behind the cabinets. Sometimes you have to actually just stay in the room that you're working in and go behind your cabinets. If I had a choice, I would do either in the crawl space or in the attic. It's just easier and cleaner in the end, and you can join up a bunch of different uh, sections of cabinets. Like if you have one cabinet across the room, you can light it just as well as you can light the others. All right, so part of this job was spent down in the crawl space. Uh, this house had a pretty nice crawl space, so no big deal. And I thought I was gonna be drilling my holes from above. I wasn't getting exactly the right spot, so I ended up drilling them from down below. If you don't have one of those big curved flexi drill bits, you're gonna want one. So get one of those, get a fish tape, get a few tools for the job. It's a pretty simple job, but a few tools will make it go a lot more smoothly. All right, so this is the fish tape up above, and I decided to fish my wires from the top to the bottom. You can go either way. You can go bottom to the top, top to the bottom. Whatever you do, use a solid method for connecting your wire to your fish tape. Typically, people take the ground wire, loop it through the hole on the fish tape, and then uh, add some tape just so it doesn't catch up in the walls. You know, you don't want to like jam it up in your walls because you've got, you know, a small, relatively small hole the wire's going through. And then uh, back down in the crawl space, I would pull the wire out, give myself plenty of room because all these wires are gonna come together ultimately in a single junction box down in that crawl space. All right, now back up top, uh, the only other thing really to do with the wires in each location of the light is to drill a hole in that uh, bottom piece of the cabinet. That's kind of like the supporting piece of the cabinet. Drill a hole in that, run your wire, and then in this case, it's an exterior wall, and I patched the vapor barrier, that plastic on the inside of the insulation just to maintain the seal. Now in this kitchen, there are four different locations for these under cabinet lights. One of them is by the switch and the others are far from the switch. But in every location, you gotta be darn careful about where you start cutting into your wall. This blue piece of tape is a stud and then I've got a post-it note on the wall uh, just reminding myself that there's a plumbing vent there. So there are some no-go areas where you're not gonna be fishing wires. You wanna be able to put your wire just about anywhere, but you can't always do that. So in this case, I had to run the wire a little bit off-center on the cabinet, and you'll see later that when I install the light, I kind of run it back to the center of the cabinet so the light is nicely centered. And then just like the other one you saw, the wire, once it's fished into the crawl space, comes up and through that lowest piece on the cabinet. And just like the other one, again, I patched up the vapor barrier on the insulation. And this is the last of the under cabinet lights. It's on an interior wall, so no insulation to deal with. 
And really nothing funky about this one. It just uh, went in just like the others. All right, so with all those guys fished down in the basement, I went back in the crawl space to tie the wires together. All right, so all the under cabinet lights have been fished and pulled through into the crawl space. And uh, they all converge right here. Um, obviously not yet in a junction box. We got and here they are all in a junction box and uh, tied together. You know, any wiring connection needs to be made in a junction box and in a crawl space. That's pretty easy to do. Okay, so up top again, uh, part of this roughing in of the wiring was to install that uh, two gang receptacle box that I mentioned. And I got a deep box with plenty of room for all these wires. You may have a double or you may have a single. It sort of depends on your situation. But anyway, I got this thing installed and reattached the studs and nice and flush with the drywall. And then let's take a look at the uh, puck lights themselves. Now, these are pretty basic puck lights, like really simple LED puck lights. They're also affordable. This is from Patriot Lighting. Uh, it's not a sponsored video or anything. I just picked these up at Menards, like a local hardware store at least here in the Midwest. I think it's a chain. Anyway, uh, simple puck lights, LED, run on 110, no transformer needed. They're not 12 volt and they are dimmable. And they also come with a housing, like a separatable housing. So first you install the housing on the under, underneath side of the cabinet. Then I uh, sort of fashion these junction boxes out of some job boxes that I got on Amazon. And just like everything else, all the tools and stuff in this build, I'll put a link down below. If someone has a link or lead on a small, really small, clean, low profile junction box that is better than these guys, like one that has, uh, you know, lock nuts on either side, I'd really appreciate it. But without that, I've been using these job boxes and they work pretty well. They just don't have those lock nuts. And really what you're doing here is tying a lamp into your wiring because that LED is, is technically a lamp and it has a lamp wire. So the lamp wire runs into the junction box, which is screwed to the bottom of the cabinet. And then I cut some surface mount conduit. Uh, this is plastic conduit. I just like the way it looks. It comes out pretty clean and it has a snap on face and adhesive backing. So once you peel that adhesive backing, you can stick it up under your wire and then click on the face. I know you can't really see it right here in this part of the video, but uh, you'll get a better look at it on the next one. All right, so then all that's left to do is to, you know, tidy up your wires, cut them to the right length and make your connections and then store the connections inside that little improvised junction box. And like I said, it all makes for a pretty clean little install of an under cabinet light that you really can't see from the front or the side. And here's an example of uh, one of the other ones that had to kind of come in at an angle. Again, not visible unless you're cranking your head underneath to see it. And uh, it just went in just like the others with that uh, conduit having that snap on facing. All right, now I mentioned this before, but one of the cool things about these LED pucks is that they're also dimmable. So I did put them on a dimmer and here I'm putting actually two lights on a dimmer. One's a ceiling light. One of these switches is for the under cabinet lights. So they're dimmable, which leads to just even better ambiance. Now, if you're going to do this job, you got to remember it's not just a wiring job. It is a big drywall repair job. And I'm not going to say everything about how I repair drywall holes, but take your time with it. Practice, make your, uh, your patches really clean, just like, just like it never happened. I mean, the goal of a drywall repair job is to you know, create something invisible, something that's never noticed by anyone. And that's gonna take some sanding and some mudding and some more sanding and just you know, taking some time with it until you can finally throw on your primer and get ready to match your paint color and paint it over. All 
All right, so here's a final look at this under cabinet lighting job. Uh, like I said, four different lights in different parts of the kitchen, all tied together in the crawl space. And the cool thing about them is that they all run off of one switch. You know, one switch right near the sink that is on a dimmer. All right, thanks for checking out the project. Hit me with a comment down below and I will definitely respond.